job goes, we pulled in a new pole. We're gonna set it off and what we call frame it. Basically drill it out, put our hardware, all the stuff that goes on the insulators and uh, things on it. Once that's done, we'll set it in the ground and uh, we get it lined up, tamped in, get the dirt around it. We then catch it off, then we're ready to pull wire up, uh, put our new new conductor in there. So we can, when all that's done, that's really when we set power to our lines. Okay. We're setting up the trucks. We have to we spot them. The boom reaches a good working length, about six steps from our work position. So he's about six steps away where I'm at. I set him up at this spot. That's from where the derrick is on the truck. A bit. Yep. Okay, we're gonna first thing we'll do is set we're gonna set our outriggers, we'll set a pole off right in here. Okay. And we'll work on it, we'll turn it up, we'll drill it, put our hardware in. Okay. How's that hole look, Chris? We're setting a 40 foot pole, the hole depth is six feet for a uh, for a 40 foot pole. Okay. Yeah, the rule of thumb is 10% plus two. 10% okay. of the pole length plus two feet. So that's 40 foot pole is four plus two gives us six. And uh, that, that works pretty good. Yeah. Now, there's a little bit of variance with companies, but okay, that's so. just your general to get a good stability on your poles. But, and uh, that, that's in uh, soil like this. All If you're setting in solid rock, but real rocky, the pole setting is a lot more shallow, actually. Right. That's a pole tamp, so we pack the dirt with. Have a piece of tape on it, check our hole depth. Make sure it's six foot, so it's good, huh? We're gonna get out our tamps, our shovels. We're gonna get out the gas drill, all our equipment we need. Frame this pole up, get it ready to put in the ground. Take our binders off and be ready. Again, to unload it, he'll keep it on uh, balance. When we set it in the ground, we put it a little bit off balance. We call it on set. That's where the bottom end or the butt's a little bit heavy. But we keep it light enough we can handle it. We can pick it up, move it. Sometimes we have to get around obstacles and carry them over fences and ditches and all kind of stuff to set them. And so we have to be careful how we set them. Uh, we want the chain as low as possible when we set them. Keep our boom. Uh, we're working around the energized lines out of the wires above us too. Yeah, you keep your boom as low as possible. That's another important thing for us. Some of these poles are pre-drilled. There's a flat spot on the back. That's called a pole gain. Pole gain, we use it as a means for uh, lining up our hardware, the pole grounds, things like that. And uh, poles have a birthmark down here on it. See that brand in the pole? Tells you, uh, tells you when the pole was made. Uh, size of it, the length of it. We also poles have a class. It, the class is the circumference of the ground. The uh, smaller the class, smaller the number. These are class five poles, but the bigger, the smaller the class is, the heavier the pole is, the more load it can carry. Okay. Some of the heavier poles we use for load bearing ability. This is also supposed to be when the pole is set, it's fixed where it's about four foot off the ground. Like I say, on, on this particular pole, turn your gain flat straight down. Okay, line your hole straight up, that way you're drilling straight into the pole, okay? Second hole 18 and 30. 18 and 30, okay? He's going to turn it in the pole cradle. So you're going to take a ruler, you have your screwdriver, the folding ruler, we don't use steel tape measures because they're conductive. We use wood or fiberglass rulers. Take a screwdriver and make some mark where you need to drill at. So 18 from there, right? There, go from your 18, measure down 30 from there, okay? You're going to try to keep his holes completely lined up. One way to do that, stick your ruler in that top hole, or that middle hole. They use that ruler and screwdriver as a guide to line up the drill. 
We want to be in the center of the pole, try to drill through the center. Drilling the hole straight takes practice. <laughs> A lot of practice. Running a drill, you want to, those bits for working right, you basically get them started. You don't press on it, the bit will pull itself. You push on it, it'll bind yeah. up, cause a lot of problems. You let it pull itself. Basically, usually you just want to hold back a little bit. Slow it down so it pulls all the chips out. It doesn't, doesn't stop it up. Put in that's our neutral. We have two wires. The top one is our energized line, it's our primary. We use those, those are bells or insulators we use. Those the bells insulate for about 8,000 volts each, so that's about 25,000 volt insulation. Just putting on there. And that part on the end, what holds the wire, we call that a dead end shoe. I'll make sure your dead end shoes are lined up properly, your eye bolts. On the back side of the bolts, we put a square nut, square washer, square nut, and a lock nut. These bolts change size and shrink as they dry out and get older, so the lock nut prevents the hardware from turning, getting too loose coming off. Chris, you got four in your back. Now on these, fellas, just snug your square nut because you don't want to pull it into the pole, right? They use square washers in this trade behind these, and uh, one thing we do, we always turn them square. Mm -hmm. This is a down guy, guy attachment. This is a terminal or dead end pole, so it has a horizontal strain. We put a guy and an anchor behind it to help hold it up straight when the strain's put on it. Yeah, it depends on the use. That different hardware, we have different, all kinds of different types of down guys and attachments depending on the amount of loading how heavy your conductor is. Now the poles frame, they're gonna get ready to set it. We're gonna hook it, what we call on set. It's slightly heavy at the butt. And they can, uh, not, not so much that you want it light enough you can still handle it, but so it'll stand up straight. On the end of our truck boom up here, we have a set of claws. When the pole's up, they put it inside the claws. That's our pole guide. And that actually holds, controls the pole when we're setting it in. Take it for set. Yeah, that's, we're good. He put a little pressure on the top, push it down. That's all right, let's turn it loose. Let it sit back down. Turn it loose. That's where a little bit off balance, a little butt heavy, but it's enough we can handle it. We always check it, make sure we have it hooked correctly. We can work it good. Boom up, get it in there. Get it off the ground. They're going to pick the butt up off the ground. Okay, and he's going to put that pole in the head, grab it. That's his pole tilt. Tilt your head back. So he can, that's actually a pole tilt. He can guide the pole, make it do whatever you want. Okay? Pole tilt. You got too much. There you go. There you go. Get that butt over the hole. All right, in. In, 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 and down. Down and in, same time, doing both. There you go. That's it. Down. All right, now we're going to cant now, get our, get the pole turned so make sure our hardware is pointing the right way. I always do when we plumb a pole, it's best to get straight off the end of the boom. I to line it up one direction and 90 degrees off the side. Now the pole's lined up, they're going to backfill and tamp. We're going to shovel dirt in and tamp it. We tamp it from the bottom up. We're done backfilling the hole. All the excess dirt we pile up around the pole so that it, when it rains, Dirt settles, it'll fill back in. 
we won't have any holes or voids around the pole. Now, a lot of the trucks nowadays have hydraulic tamps, but the students here need to learn it, how to do it manually, <laughs> and then they'll appreciate the hydraulic yes, tamps, right? Yeah, good operator get off the truck help tamp in too. <laughs> If you want to do this after the poles back fields, so you don't accidentally drop, drop your chain six foot down underground. Now we're going to pull the down guy for this one so we can pull a wire. We're going to use a chain hoist for this. That we call a preform grip. Holds the wire. Now look, before you do that, put your pulling eye on, anchor rod pulling eye on the anchor rod. This allows us to attach a chain hoist to the anchor rod and pull this down guy. What you do, just a wedge, okay? We put our eye, go look it around. We're gonna put our eye in here. Put our wedge on the inside, bolt through it. Well, I guess I am, there it goes. I bolt through it, that's that nut. And what this will do is, Start pulling that wedge bites into it, okay? This wedge will bite into it, help hold it, okay? So when you pull, you need your bulldog grip and chain hoist. What you do when you put this on, you're gonna let our chain out on a hoist, good bit, stand on it, pick it up, okay? Put it on up, raise your grip on up, all right? Put our hoist in, we keep a little pressure. Hook it in the pulling eye, need a little more. There you go. Alright, let's go pull it. Put it on up and down. Uh -oh. Slack up. Alright, now he's gonna pull it. Now, anytime you pull, well, if somebody has to watch this pole, we're gonna put what we call rake in it. That means it leans back away from the strain, okay? Usually about a width of a pole top. But we don't want too much to be hard to work. Now what he'll do is take his preform, wrap it around, go ahead and wrap it first. See so you straighten that tail out some, get it out of your way. All right, now, just get it started, wrap one side. You only hit it, you only have to do, Chris, is wrap it about five or six times. Don't worry about going all the way, okay? And uh, that's too close to the end. Okay, just hit it five, five, four or five even. Doesn't take too much. We're, no, we don't have enough strain on it. Now do the other side just a little bit. We want to get just enough to hold it. And then Make this preform hold, and you can take your hoist off, get yeah. it out of the way, and finish it up. Okay, take your hoist off top, bottom. Now he's going to finish making up his preform. Roll it up all the way to the top. Once he gets to the top, he clip it off. Make sure it's flat. We don't want anybody get hanging up on it, right? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to cut off the excess. Right here. Just cut it right there in that bend. Be all right. Pull it out, cut off the excess, a pair of bolt cutters. This sky wire steel is pretty tough stuff. <laughs> Get it, boy. There you go. Then find, finish it off, he'll put on a, a guy guard. Pull it, y'all just pull it to you. Slide it up and oh, yeah. he'll take his pulling eye off. That's ready to go. Ready to pull wire.